what's going on everybody hey sam32 we're back playing mk11 so today's video uh, is going to be a cabal breakdown um i'm going to do it the same way i did with the cetrion one the reason i wanted to break down cabal is because i feel like cabal is one of those characters that fall short on a lot of people's tier lists um i personally feel like he has the potential to be a top three character with the right combinations of moves but in his tournament loadouts they didn't really give him that um, so I'm actually going to show off his two tournament loadouts today and I'm going to take a look at a third loadout that I created that I feel like if he had access to um, as a tournament loadout he'd be top three easy. Uh, so start off with the normal. So stand one is going to be your seven frame uh, normal fastest punish that he has. Uh, it hits high but there's two strings off of it. He has one one and one one one. Now the two differences with those strings, uh, 1-1-1 one, one, one obviously going to net you more damage in your combos, but it also pops the opponent up, so, you know, anything you do after that, if I'm going to take my dash, and then stand more into hook slam, there's two points in that combo where uh, Sub-Zero could have broken out of, whereas with 1-1, one, one, uh, the entire combo leaves him standing, right, so, you know, if I do like max damage with that, right, at no point in that combo, can Sub-Zero break out. So that 19% I got is guaranteed. Um, stand 2 is a 9 frame punish. Uh, it also hits high, and it'll hit from range where your stand 1 will whiff. So like from this range where your stand 1 whiffs, your stand 2 will hit. Um, and he actually has 3 strings off the stand 2, but I don't use this one. That's 2-2-1. Two, two, I don't really use that. But I use 2-2 two, two, and 2-3. Two, now both those strings are negative 1 on block. The cool thing about 2-2 two, two, Right, look at how fast it recovers, right? So look at how look at how fast I did that throw after I did the two-two. Um so it recovers super fast. I think it's only 16 recovery frames, so it recovers super fast. And if the opponent knows there's a third hit at the end of that string, or if it's the first time you use that string and they're not expecting you to stagger it like that, you can catch a lot of people off guard with that. And his grab range is really good. Right? Like, you really don't have to walk forward that much um, to, to get the grab off. So, with 2-3, though, um, you fall into that same situation with the stand 1 punish, where 2-3 nets you more damage but launches, where 2-2 leaves them grounded. So, you know, if I get, like, a 2-2 punish, right, that's a guaranteed 21% that the opponent can't break out of. But 2-3 is going to net me more damage, about 25, I believe. Yeah. But again, there's two points in that combo where the opponent can break out of. So it's important to know the situation that you're in, which combo to use. Forward four is 10 frame mid. Um, that'll hit where stand two doesn't. So right here where stand two whips, your forward four will hit. Uh, it has this string that comes off it, forward four one plus three, or forward four throw. That actually hits overhead, and that's important because typically when you make a loadout for Cabal, you're gonna either have the low hook grab equipped or the low buzzsaw equipped, right? The reason for that is because he doesn't have any lows in any of his strings. So you need some way to try and open the opponent up, right? Now the low buzzsaw really isn't the best option as far as like a mix-up tool goes. If you wanna have like that low mix-up option, you're better off going for the low hook. But the low buzzsaw does serve the purpose of giving the opponent something extra that they have to think about, right? They, they can't just block high all the time when you have the low buzzsaw as an option because you can throw it out at any point. Uh, but with the forward four, right, because you have that string as an option, right, forward four overhead, and then you also have the buzzsaw as an option, right, you can kind of keep your opponent on your toes with that. Um, or on their toes, excuse me. Keep the opponent on their toes with that. Um, if you wanted to get a full combo off of the 4-4 punish, the problem is you have to fully commit to the Nomad Dash, right? Um, you know, the, it just it comes out too fast for you to like see the forward four hit, like it's 10 frames. So it, it comes out too fast for you to see it hit and then go, you know, for the Nomad Dash or see that it gets blocked and maybe just go into the string or just let it rock. You actually have to co fully commit to the Nomad Dash. So if Sub-Zero does something that's like negative 11 on block off by a frame uh, and then he ends up blocking the Nomad Dash, Nomad Dash is negative 29. So if he blocks that, he gets a full combo punish just for me being off by like one frame. So personally, I would never go for a 4-4 punish. Um, but there are instances where you have to because, like I mentioned, from this range, 4-2 doesn't hit. Or, excuse me, from this range, the stand 2 doesn't hit, but the 4-4 does. So at, in that situation, right, 
you would have to go like if something's negative 11 you wouldn't have time to like close that distance and then go for a four uh, a stand two punish you have to go for a four four punish but just make sure that you're frame perfect when you when you go for that because if you're off by a frame as i mentioned full combo uh four two the 12 frame mid that'll hit where the four four whips from uh, right here uh and there's two strings off that yes four two two it's so negative three on block and four two four which is negative two on block also ends in an overhead and that actually allows you um another uh string to have this mix up off of now one thing to note about that low bus saw and this is one of the main reasons i say it's not that good as a 50 50 tool right or really just you know a tool in general as far as pressure goes if i hit with 422 and go into the low you notice how it splits those two like it's not one combo so let's just say for example right i go for a 422 and the opponent gets hit by the 422 for some reason but i've already commit into the the low buzzsaw you know as as far as like going for a 50 50 or something like that and they get hit by the 422 they can still block that low right and i'll show you that the low they can still block it so they can still block that low and that low bus saw is negative 17 on block so from that distance sub-zero is getting full combo right same thing with the forward four right negative 17 on block from that distance that's a full combo so the low bus saw as i mentioned really is a zoning tool that's really what it's meant for but the reason you either put that or the the low hook on right if you're going to use that in pressure it does give you some options because he doesn't have a low in any of his strings his only lows are his down three and his down four so having that option does keep the opponent on their toes it, it forces them to be aware that you do have that as an option and that they can't just block high all the time um but back to this string so because this string is only negative three, right, and this ends in an overhead, or I can go for the low buzzsaw, if you have the respect from the opponent, right, and they're not expecting you to stagger that string, or they see this string, and then, you know, they're waiting to, to make that guess, they're like, okay, is he gonna go overhead, is he gonna go low, or whatever, then you can start staggering it and going for grabs, okay? And as I mentioned before, with the 2-2 two -two string, right, uh, his grab range is really good. So a 4-2-2, you notice, I didn't even have to walk forward in order for my throw to hit. So, you know, especially if you don't have one of the low options equipped, in order to open people up, right, using 2-2 or 4-2-2 and staggering those strings is going to be really good options. And even just for pressure in general, staggering those strings are going to be pretty good options for you. It's back one, it's a 15 frame mid. You can see the range at which that hits from. It hits a, you know, just inside of, about a, about a step and a half inside of like starting distance is where that'll hit from. Um, that's a, like I said, 15 frame mid. It goes into two strings. It has back one two, which actually hits overhead. So back one into low is also a, a, a good mix up. And that low bus all combos. So uh, if they for some reason get hit by the back one, you don't have to worry about them blocking the low bus on punishing you it is a full combo um back one two is negative seven on block that's actually his most unsafe string so none of his strings are, are full combo punishable and then back one two down two which is negative four on block that's mid overhead mid and that's actually a crushing blow on punisher counting hit and it launches uh the other good thing about back one two right it, in conjunction with the low bus on right if you notice that combos right that whole thing combos and look at the distance i've put between myself and the opponent so against characters like sub-zero uh jackie briggs characters that you know are sort of like mix-up characters um you know sub-zero i consider a mix-up character i don't really you know depending on the loadout obviously but i don't really consider sub-zero like a, a, a zoning character he really doesn't want to be at that distance all the time he, he wants to be in your face and mix you up with either the low or the overhead um and jackie has no projectiles really so she she wants to be in your face at all times jackie at this range is at a severe disadvantage especially against cabal who has the range advantage over her and also has good uh zoning tools himself and controls space and neutral really well but the reason i brought up this option right is because let's just say like Sub-Zero whiffs something in the neutral and I get a back one two punish on him, right? I can end a combo like that. Now, in his tournament loadouts, he doesn't have access to his hook slam. 
uh, which pulls them out the air, his hook grab rather, which pulls them out the air, and if you amplify it, it launches. He doesn't have access to that, so his combo damage is very limited in his tournament loadout. So one of the reasons I don't think they're really that good. So typically you're gonna want to end your combos in something like that to get the most damage possible, right? But using back one two into low buzzsaw as an option, right? But I want you to notice about that combo I just did. That whole combo, right, was grounded. They can't break out of that. Also, it leaves them standing so they don't have their getup options. And again, look at the space it puts me at. So if I were to do a combo like that, if Jackie were to try to do something or Sub-Zero were to try to do something to me and they whiff and I hit them with something like that, hold on. And I hit them with this combo not only right is that damage completely guaranteed right I've put them back in the space that I want to put them at right so now I can control the the tempo control the the match and and put them at the space I want them to be at right I also don't have to come off any resources for that combo as well right nomad dash is really good because it's one of the few moves in the game that allows you to get follow-up combo damage without coming off any meter so Low buzzsaw, even though, as I mentioned, it's not the best tool for, you know, mixing people up and using it in pressure and stuff like that. It does have a lot of disadvantages with it, you know, as opposed to the, the low hook. But there are options with the low buzzsaw that make it better than the low hook in certain scenarios. And I believe that's one of the scenarios. The other scenario is you can actually amplify this and make it safe. Um, and I, technically it's not safe. It's negative nine on block. But if you notice, like, the range at which it pushes you at, right, like, Sub-Zero is not punishing me at negative nine from that range. He might hit me with, like, a down, I, I don't actually know how fast Sub-Zero's low pokes are, so he might, like, hit me with, like, a down four or something like that or, and punish me or whatever. But, uh, as far as, like, getting full combo damage, he can't. Uh, the, the most he's gonna get out of that is, like, now it's his turn, that he can initiate his offense. But having the option of being able to amplify that and, and give myself some safety, you know, it does give it that advantage over the low hook because the low hook is negative 17, same as the low buzzsaw, but the low hook can't be amplified. That negative 17 is negative 17. You can't do anything about that. So if they guess right on the low, you know, you're going to get full combo for it. Um, one thing about the low hook, though, it does have good range on it. So if you space it out properly, you can make it so that it is safe, technically. Um, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk more about that when we actually take a look at the low hook. Um, what else do I want to talk about? Uh, the low poke. So down one, seven frame, uh, down one, negative four on block, standard down one, nothing too crazy about it. His down three is actually, like, really bad, in my opinion. Uh, typically, your like, down three, down four are your slower moves, but they have better range to them, and obviously they hit low. Uh, his down three, because he, like, moves his entire body back, it makes the hitbox really short on it. So like from this range, his down through a whiff, but his down one, right? His down one will hit. So to me, there's really no reason to ever use down three. Um, down four on the other hand though, is really good. So this is 11 frames. It's minus six on block. But what I want you to notice is on hit, look at how much space it creates. And then on block, I want you to look at how much pushback it has, right? So for max range, look at how much distance I've put between me and Sub-Zero. For him blocking that down four and you can actually use that to set up with punishing right and what do i mean by that oftentimes when you go for a low poke and the opponent blocks it it's almost second nature to want to counter poke to just want to go in on the opponent right after you block their low poke and then try to initiate your offense right but because of the range this puts me at if some zero tries to like advance forward on me right or if he tries to like counter poke me and he whiffs right Back one is one of, if not the best whip punishing tools in the game. So I can sit here and hit him with a down four and take a step back slightly. And if he whiffs anything in my face, back one, two into Nomad Dash. Um, back one, two into Nomad Dash, you know, full combo or whatever. And also, right, that allows you to, you know, go for this option if you so please, right? So, like, I'm playing against Sub-Zero, I'm playing against Jackie, they whiff something, or I hit him with a down four and they try to counter poke, and I get the back one whiff, right? And go into that, now I reset the spacing, and, you know, that entire combo damage, that 17% that I just got for that, was all guaranteed. I came off no resources, and I put them back where I wanted them to be, all because they tried to counter poke my down four. So, down four is a really good tool to me, really useful uh, for Cabal. 
Um, I can take take a look at all the strings I wanted to talk about. One, 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 two, two. All right, yeah. So we'll take a look at the special moves. Um, the base special moves for Cabal would be his Nomad Dash, which hits from anywhere on the screen. And like I said, full combo anywhere on the screen if it hits. Um, you don't have to come off any meter to get damage off of that so it's one of the best moves in the game for that the opponent jumps they can't actually jump over that so if the opponent like tries to jump it'll hit them out the sky it's a really good tool um he has this straight bus off it's pretty fast um you can actually throw them pretty rapidly it has decent recovery to it it's high so it can be ducked um but the cool thing about that right so the regular version is minus 10 but the amplified version is in negative one and what the amplified version of the buzzsaw allows you to do is off of this string right so let's just say i'm mixing people up with like the back one or whatever uh and i go for the overhead and i want a way to guarantee that if the overhead is blocked i'm safe but if the overhead isn't blocked and they guess wrong i can actually convert off it well with the amplified buzzsaw you can because if they block this right so if the opponent were to block this right i'm only negative one on block and i have a seven frame down one which is towards the quicker side there are characters like cetrion and i believe sonya who have eight frame down ones so i can actually uh in some instances like if they're not fast enough with their counter poking i can actually take my turn back if they try to like down one me or you know maybe for example they don't know that i'm only negative one after me to run buzzsaw and they try to like you know start their offense or something like that you know you can steal your turn back a lot of times using that move but then if they get hit by it you can actually dash up and get a combo of that right and that works at mid screen in the corner you know wherever 24% off of that at mid screen for them guessing wrong on the overhead and getting hit by that. So that's a pretty good option. Um, in zoning, it recovers really fast as well. You can see how much faster it recovers than the regular one. So it's a, it's a good zoning tool. It comes out quick. Um, it recovers fast if you amplify it. And then also in pressure, if you know I'm making them guess between the overhead and low and they guess wrong on the overhead option, I can use that to guarantee safety if it's blocked. But then if they, like I said, guess wrong, I get a full combo off that even at mid screen. So that's a really good tool as well. And then he has the hook slam, um, which is down back four. That actually reaches pretty far. As you can see, he kind of like steps forward and, and throws both hooks at them. So it has really good range. And you're probably asking, why would you ever, you know, you wouldn't ever use that just in neutral so it doesn't matter. But that's actually a crushing blow um, on counter hit or punish. And Sub-Zero has a string, right? That overhead string where he does that, that overhead boot at the end is negative 19 on block. You'd be surprised at how many attacks in the game you can punish with the hook slam. And because it has good range on it, if they do something that's like negative 19 or negative, you know, something like that, but has a lot of pushback to it, because of this range, you can still get that punish off on them. You know what I mean? Um, and it launches on Crushing Blow, and you can get a pretty decent amount of damage off that. So it's a good tool. Um, it is negative 15 on block, though. But, you, you know, you wouldn't ever use it, like, in block pressure or anything like that. So that's not really super important. Um, it's pretty much your main combo ender. Um, and if you, you know, are able to punish with it and, you know, get your crushing blow combo, it gives you really good damage. So, you know, Hook Slam is a, is a really good tool for him. Especially in his tournament loadouts. I, I, I believe I mentioned that he doesn't have the hook grab in, in either of his tournament loadouts. So his combo damage is really limited, which is one of the reasons why I feel like a ball in tournament isn't that great uh so typically you're gonna end your combos in like stand for hook slam just to get as much damage as possible unless you choose to end it like this and you know you prefer having that neutral and having that spacing reset as opposed to just going for your damage it also in some situations like if their back is to the corner you might not want to end with hook slam and switch positions so you can always go for something like that and hold on let me see something
all right, it's only it's only plus four on hit but like if you get a you know a conversion in the corner or something like that um you know maybe you get some type of punish maybe you're in the corner and you punish something like a stand one or something like that and you go into nomad dash and then you switch sides and their back is against the corner you know you can go for that and now i'm plus four on hit so now with their back in the corner right and i'm plus four now i can you know i leave them standing right guaranteed damage they're left standing so they don't have the wake up options and then i can go for you know continued offense off of that um so let's get into the uh gear specific moves or the, the load uh variation specific moves so we talked about the low bus saw a lot already um he has the straight air bus saw which replaces his downward bus saw um, and this move is also negative 29 on block, so if you ever do it like up close and they block it, you're going to eat full combo. Uh, you can actually amplify it though, and he'll land quicker, so it's not as unsafe, but you, you still get punished. Um, but the cool thing about that move is you can actually get good combo damage off that anywhere on the screen. So like if I, if I win air-to-air -air against Sub-Zero... Into Nomad Dash and then Stand Form to Hook Slam, you get about 21% off that. Um, also off a of Jump 3, it also works about 25% off that. Even if the opponent is standing, you can actually get like a back one two off that. You get some decent damage off that as well, 23.5%. And then in the corner, you can actually get uh, some really good damage in the corner. So 31% off that. Um, so let's just say like I have him in the corner or whatever and I do a jump in and they try to anti-air me, right? They can eat 31% for them trying to anti-air me. Um, and then I also put them back in the corner. So that move is good. Uh, as far as like a zoning tool goes, I prefer having the downward one because it hits mid. I'm, I'm pretty sure it hits mid. I, I can't imagine it hitting high. But uh, it covers a lot of you know that distance or that space on the screen um like from this range if i do the downward one it'll actually like hit them with the straight one um you know unless you're doing like instant airs right they can just easily like get around it um obviously you don't get you really don't get combo damage off of the downward one because I've, I've tried it um as far as like doing something like a jump three into the downward one it doesn't really in the corner it'll get you damage but at mid screen you're not really going to be getting damage off of the downward one so as far as like converting off of an air to air um or if the opponent tries to anti-air one of your jump ins and you hit them um this move is better as opposed to the downward buzzsaw but as far as just a, a sheer zoning tool i believe the downward one is slightly better um but both of them, you can meter burn both of them and be a little bit safer. It'll make you fall faster. So, you know, they, they, they're they similar in certain ways, but they, they do have, each of them have their own advantage over the other one. And then in this variation, the third move I think he has is the Nomad Dash Cancel. Yeah, and then and the thing with the Nomad Dash Cancel is, so it, it works the same, uh, you know, it, it's good for pressure. Right? But it also allows you to do a similar thing that you could do with the meter burn buzzsaw, the meter burn straight buzzsaw, where you can actually commit into the nomad dash, right? Because if the opponent blocks the mid part and then they guess wrong on the overhead or the low, right? If I wanted to combo the overhead into the nomad dash, like the back one too, into nomad dash, I have to commit to that strength, right? I can't. I can't, like, if they block the back one, I can't see that they didn't block the overhead and then cancel into the Nomad Dash or, you know, let it rock. Like, if, if I think they're going to get hit by the overhead, I have to commit to the Nomad Dash. And if they guess right, I'm negative 29. But with the Nomad Dash cancel, you can actually see if they get hit and cancel it, right? So, if the opponent doesn't get hit, we can just let it rock. Or the opponent does get hit right, you can just like rock. And if they guess right, you can cancel that. 
right? And you, and you saw I, I have it on random combo, so I'm hit confirming. Whether or not he's getting hit by that, I'm letting it rock. If he doesn't get hit by it, if he guesses right, I cancel it. Um, now that actually, I don't know if you can see it because I have the meter on refill. But that actually comes off of one bar of defensive meter when you do that. So once you run out of defensive meter, um, you know, you can't cancel it anymore. And then also taking up that bar of defensive meter eliminates your options for like a breakout or something like that. So you do have to, you know, use it sparingly and know how to use it. I wouldn't just every time you're in pressure, go from back one two into Nomad Dash and, you know, risk having to come off that defensive bar if they guess right. But it is an option. Um, you, you know, you can also use it in pressure. You know, you can do whatever you want into it. Um, any type of string into it. Um, and go for whatever type of pressure you want. So, I think that's all the moves that he has. Yeah, the, the, those are all the three uh, three moves that he has in this loadout. Take a look at the second loadout. This loadout has one of the most useless moves in the game, in my opinion. <laughs> um, so this loadout, he actually gets the low hook over the buzzsaw. And with the low hook, you can see the range on it. So even though it's negative 17 on block, as I mentioned before, same as the low buzzsaw, if you space it out properly, you can actually make it so that the opponent like really can't punish you for it. Yeah, from like that range, like negative 17 from that range, all Sub-Zero really is going to be able to do is get like a slide punish. Um, but most characters really aren't going to be able to do anything to you for, for punishing that from that range. Um, I won't say most, but you're, you're not going to get full combo punished for, you know, hitting that at max range. But if you are like mixing the opponent up and they block that, right uh from this distance you most certainly will get full combo punished um what's the other move he has he has oh the nomad spin so this move is horrible um in my opinion i i don't say that about most moves but obviously you know they can't make every move the most useful move but this move first of all it it doesn't serve any purpose as far as like pressure goes i, I believe it's negative 16 on block by itself yeah, it's negative 16. Amplified is only negative 6, but it doesn't come out if they block the first part. So, like, if I do this, and he blocks the first part of the Nomad Spin, you see I'm amplifying it. He doesn't he doesn't uh, do the Amplify. It doesn't come out. In order for the Amplify to come out, you actually have to whiff the first part of it. Like, like what, what is the point of that? <laughs> um, and, and really, the only reason you would ever use that is like a combo right here or something but like this combo right here does 20 percent that did 17 percent right so i'm losing damage for going for that move um i guess you know I, i've never really tested it out as like an anti-air or something like that but you know he has he has better anti-airs like if the opponent jumps in and you space it out you can anti-air them with like back one or something like that um it's, really there's no point in using the nomad spin it's just a useless move um i honestly feel like even if he even if they took out nomad spin from this loadout and gave him hook grab at least this loadout would be you know it would be rather useful because he would have the low hook he would have a, a mix-up option. He would have an option for combo damage. And then the third move he has is the extended hook. And what this does is it actually will restand the opponent. So, right, if I do something like that, I restand them. And you're plus two on hit, so your down one is guaranteed. Um, you know, if the, if the opponent tries to, like, counter poke you or something like that, or they're not respecting your plus frames, your down one is guaranteed off that, being seven frames. So technically, it comes out in five frames because you're plus two, and no character in the game has a five frame move. So if you think the opponent is going to try and disrespect you for doing the hook slam, down one is guaranteed off of that. Um, and like I said, it restands. The other thing, too, is it's negative 12 on block, but it has, like, a crazy amount of pushback to it. You can see how far away it pushes the opponent. Um, so, you know, if you do any type of string into the extended hook or whatever, um, you know, even though you are negative, you can see how much pushback it has to it. So that's really not going to do it. If anything, you know, you can even, you know, intentionally use that on block to reset the spacing 
um, if the opponent is like in your face and, or Sub-Zero is trying to like mix you up or something like that, you know, you can go for something like this and just reset that neutral. So now like I'm back at a range where I can kind of, you know, play my footsie game again and just kind of get him off of me. So, you know, even on block, the extended hook is a, is a good option. And then at the end of your combos, um, the other thing about the extended hook that's good is, as I said, it leaves them standing, but it also leaves them on the same side. Uh, using the hook slam as an ender, the only disadvantage with using that as an ender in some situations is it switches sides. So if they're in the corner, right, you wouldn't always want to end with that because it'll put you in the corner. Right, having the option of the extended hook not only leaves them in the corner, but it leaves them standing. And like I said, I'm plus two, so now I can, you know, go for continued offense or whatever uh, after I do that move. But uh, this loadout would be a lot better if Nomad Spin wasn't on it. I feel like personally, both of these loadouts, both tournament loadouts, have pros and cons. Um, if you're more of a zoner heavy style of play, um, if you prefer, you know, having more zoning options and stuff like that and, and then having more safety in your mix-ups, Tournament 1 is what you're going to want to go for. Tournament 2 is more of like the, the high risk type of loadout, um, except for like the Nomad Spin, which is just useless. But with the extended hook, right, you have the option of always being able to reset the neutral because on block you can see how much space it creates between you and your opponent and then the low hook even though it is always going to be negative 17 right you can't like amplify it like you can with the low bus saw and make it safer if you space it out properly and it also has a crushing blow if the opponent like is stand blocking and you hit them with that and you get huge damage off of that i think i can show that what is it stance block stance hold there it is um, so if the opponent blocks that, right, if the opponent is stand blocking, 27% off that, um, which obviously you don't get that option with the low bus. So, so you know, tournament two is more of like your, your high risk, high reward uh, type of variation. Um, but you can, you know, you don't have the same level of safety, but you, you know, if you space things out and, and do things in the right way, you can be, you know, you can have some sort of safety uh, as, as far as like your mix up options go. And then with the extended hook, right, like I said, you have the option of always resetting the neutral uh, and always making it so that the opponent can't wake up. Um, and, you know, if the opponent doesn't have defensive meter to break out of your combo or whatever, you know, ending your combo and extended hook eliminates their get up options, puts them right in front of you. You're plus two on hit, so now you can continue your offense or whatever. So to me, tournament one is your zoning, your safety, defensive loadout. Tournament two is more offensive, high risk. Um, they both give you different options, right? Now, let's get into the loadout I created. All right, this is my loadout. This is the loadout I use like in casual sets and stuff like that. So this loadout has the hook grab on it. And what the hook grab does is it allows you to get more damage off of your conversion. So let's take a situation where, as I mentioned, right, you get like a whiff punish with back one two, right? Look at how much damage you get off that. 31%. As opposed to just, you know, something like this. You get 21%. Extra 10% because I have the hook move equipped. Um, so, you know. I also have the the low hook on this one so the same same thing that applies with having the low hook you have that mix-up option um you have that crushing blow option obviously not as safe as the low bus saw but if you space it out correctly you can make it so that that move is is pretty hard to to deal with and then i also gave him the nomad dash cancel so i do keep in my mix-up options that same level of safety that is in the first tournament loadout where i can if i choose to commit into that and then if the opponent guesses right i can just cancel it and still be safe so this loadout right with the low hook the nomad dash cancel and then having the hook grab being able to extend your combos and get extra damage if this were a tournament loadout for cabal i really feel like he would be a top three character i really feel like he could contend with aaron black garrett sonia all the characters that people uh, say her top tier now, I really feel like with this loadout, he could contend with him easily. He could hold his own. Um, 
I'll show it like his crushing blows real quick. Um, let's see. Let's put him on throw. So this string, 4224, as I mentioned, is a crushing blow on counter hitter punish. You get 21% off that. Back one, two, three. I'm sorry, why did I say back one, two, three? Oh, because I'm thinking of this. <laughs> uh, back one, two, down two, excuse me. Crushing blows and it launches into two, three. Now this 2-3, as far as damage scaling goes, is his best combo string. Um, but getting this link is kind of tight. It's, it's a tight link. The easier version of this would be to do like 1-1 one, one into it. That's the easier version of it. Then you go something like that. But uh, if you want to get like the most damage, I'm going to try to get it. Jesus Christ. It's, it's definitely a, a tough lane. It's something that requires a lot of practice. I mean, I, I'll try that. I'll try that again later. But uh, the most damage you can get off that, you would do something like 2-3 into uh, the hook grab. Or 2-3 into the nomad dash, rather. And then 4-4 four, four hook grab. And then 4-4 four, four into the hook slam. And that's most not the most damage you can get but depending on how close you are to the corner you can actually get stand four into hook slam um after you do like two three into into the nomad dash if you try to do stand four into hook slam it's not going to hit because the stand four pushes them away too far um so you have to do forward four into into the hook grab but if you're close enough to the corner you can actually get stand four into hook slam and you'll get slightly more damage off it i really want to land this combo because oh there we go So that's 39%, and if you're a little bit closer to the corner, you can get that over 40, because um, you can do stand four into the, the hook slam, and you'll get slightly more damage off of that. Um, what else? Crushing blows. Hold on. So this crushing blows. All right, I, uh, <laughs> I switched to set you around real quick, because it's easier to to punish her with the uh, with the last two crushing blows. So her hook slam is on the hook four. His hook slam rather also crushing blows. You can actually dash up to get three off that. And I don't know if I mentioned this, but for combo damage, two three actually skills uh, the best in his combo. So you see that was 46% right there. And also with the hook slam or the hook grab rather. Having that on the slowdown, but you get even more damage. You get 53% off of that. Um, so that's just a, you know, a little bit of an indication of how having hook slam, um, I keep saying hook slam, how having the hook grab move allows you to extend your combos even further and get even more damage, which is something that the two tournament loadouts really don't give you. Um, and then this is actually. His uh, meter burn bus on is actually also a Cabal. 
Um, I also want to do a discussion, um, discussion video later on in the week, kind of talking about how the tournament variation uh, system is kind of, it's kind of putting this idea in people's heads that certain characters are unbalanced, when in reality they're not. Like, no character in their base form is overwhelmingly better than another. What separates the characters is the moves you give them in their tournament variations. And the problem with the tournament variations is that there are some characters that just have loadouts that showcase what they're able to do better than other characters. But I don't want to see a character like Aaron Black get the Captain Cold treatment because, you know, he's so good in tournament, right? That's not the fault of the players, right? If every other character in the game had a loadout that had two of their best moves on it, right, we wouldn't be having this discussion about whose top tier is Aaron Black broke and all this stuff. The reason those characters at the top are as good as they are is because, like, Aaron Black has arguably his two best moves on a single loadout, right? You can't really say that for 80% of the characters in the game as far as the tournament loadouts go, but you can create a loadout that showcases a character's full potential if done the right way. And again, like I said, Cabal, I wanted to show him off and kind of explain, you know, why his tournament loadouts really aren't that great and how you can make a loadout with Cabal and still make him able to contend with top tier characters. Um, it, it just all depends on, on the moves that you that you put on. But, you know, again, we'll get more into detail with that in a later video. But yeah, that was Cabal. Showed off the two tournament loadouts. All three of these loadouts, like mine included, um, all serve their own purpose, right? Like I said, tournament one is more of your zoning, safety, like defensive almost loadout. Tournament two is more high risk, high reward, in your face. Um, it just gives you different options as far as ending your combos and stuff like that. And then with this loadout, you have some sort of safety with your 50-50 options. You have the low option, and then you also have the hook grab, which allows you to get more damage. And this loadout, to me, is a perfect loadout to showcase how good Cabal really can be. And if this were a loadout for Cabal, he would be amazing. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much all I want to talk about. Um, next video, I'll probably be doing a Garrus breakdown, if possible. Um, but that'll probably come later in the week. I probably want to do the discussion video as my next video. But uh, yeah, so that was Cabal. Um, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.